you have learned how to use parameters to pass values to your stored procedures. But as we told you earlier, we can also use parameters to return values to the calling program. So in this demo, let's create a new procedure. Get unpaid invoices for client. Here we need a parameter called client ID of type integer. Now our query is going to be pretty simple. Select. Let's say we only want to get the count and the sum of all these unpaid invoices. So sum of invoice total from the invoices table i where i dot client id equals to client id and payment total equals to zero. Let me put this on a new line. That's better. Let's go ahead and create this procedure. All right, done. Now let's quickly test it before going any further. So here it is, get unpaid invoices for client. In this pop-up, I'm gonna pass two for the client ID. We don't have any unpaid invoices for this client. So let's try client number three. All right, that's better. So we have a total of two unpaid invoices and the total amount is $286. Now we can also receive these values through parameters. So back to our procedure, we need to add a couple more parameters here. Invoices count. We can use tinyint or int depending on the possible number of unpaid invoices. For simplicity, let's just go with int. We also need invoices total. That is going to be decimal of nine and two. Now, by default, all these parameters in a store procedure are input parameters, which means we can only use them to pass values to our procedures. So here we need to prefix these two parameters with the out keyword. And this marks these parameters as output parameters. So we can use them to get values out of this procedure, okay? Now we need to make a slight change to our select statement. We need to select these two values into invoices underline count and invoices underline total. So we're reading these values and copying them into these output parameters, okay? Now let's apply the changes, good. And then call this procedure again. Now we get three parameters here. The first parameter client ID is an input parameter. The other two are output parameters. So let's pass three for the client ID and execute. We get the same result as before, but look at the code that is generated here. First, we have to define two variables, invoices count and invoices total. These are what we call user defined variables. A variable is basically an object that we can use to store a single value in memory. Now to define a variable, we need to prefix it with an at sign. So here using the set statement, we're defining two variables and initializing them to zero. Then when calling this procedure, we need to pass these variables. So our first argument, three is the client ID. And the other arguments here are the variables that we defined earlier. Now, after we call this procedure, we need to use the select statement to read these values and display them here. So as you can see, using output parameters requires a little bit more effort to read data. And I would suggest you avoid them unless you have a valid reason for using them.